you know, I want to address something in the chat. Um, MZ says, per, Chris, perhaps U.S. Has, is anticipating the reawakening of Japan. Now, this is somebody told me this decades ago, and um, and they said that they they foresaw the rise of China. They foresaw it. They were telling me about the rise of China way back then, uh, and long before Xi Jinping became president, they were telling me about China would rise. And, um, and they said that when I said, what about Japan? They, they told me this. Do you actually believe that the Japanese has forgotten that America dropped not one, but two nuclear bombs on them? And, and I was like, no, they didn't. And he says that the guy says, um, if war breaks out between the United States and Japan, when China starts digging in the backside of the United States, all of those um, occupied countries when they see America at her weakened position, they're going to all turn because it'll be Asia for Asia and all of them are going to fight on the same side. Asia is going to run America out of there because the only way she knows how is on her terms and dictates to everybody else. And that's what was t told to me. And I've been watching everything that the person told me and everything that they told me geopolitically and economically I've seen manifest. So, um, that's what I'm saying. What what have you to say about this? Uh, especially, I think America wants to use like um, uh, South Korea and and um, Japan and and the Philippines as a as a battering ram, and especially specifically um, Japan because they want to hem in China's naval forces with those two island chains or whatever. Well, there, there's a couple of reasons why U.S. is increasingly depending on its alliances with Japan, South Korea, and Philippines, etc. One reason is, uh, ju uh, you know, just a geography, because this is uh, what the U.S. called the first island chain. This is this states from the Cold War when U.S. wanted to block K, Soviet Union, and China. So they have the so-called first island chain that run through uh, Japan, through Okinawa down to Taiwan, Philippines, and Southeast Asia to keep the communist power hemmed in. And now it's been repurposed and repositioned against the rise of China. But another factor is that United States by itself, <clears throat> you can no longer contain China. Just look at the industrial output. Um, I saw a chart that was somebody posted. It showed that China at the present, it accounts for 35% of the industrial output of the world. And you need to add United States, you need to add Japan, you need to add India, you need to add Germany, you need to add Italy, UK, add all the EU countries combined, and then you only make 34%. So so you can't, you can't even with all that NATO power combined, you, you are not matching the industrial might of China. So this is why U.S. is very busy trying to uh, construct alliance against China, because even the U.S. decision makers knew that U.S. alone do not have the industrial power to contain China. It needs to corral together or all, all its vassal states together to form a anti-China containment uh, a, a strategy. But I, I think your friend is onto something. The, the thing is, a lot of these U.S. vassal states. There are U.S. vassal states because they have been cowered and uh, have been subjugated, and and they had no choice. I mean, this is look at example of Germany and Japan. They still have U.S. military on their soil after you know how eighty years, and 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 and, and any Japanese prime minister that dares to say no to United States, they don't last long in the office. They mm -hmm. you know they. they this, they, they don't, these are countries that don't have true sovereignty. But however, you know, once the U.S. hegemony start weakened, you're going to see people, rats abandoning shit, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're, you're gonna, it's going gonna to happen very, fairly quickly. And uh, as, as for, for the specific example of Japan, it's a little bit complicated because Japan still scared of china they're scared of the rise of china because they they know they they know what they did what their grandpa did in china in world war ii <laughs> so so they're definitely afraid that china is going to take revenge this is one thing that why they're climbing on to the u.s japan alliance because they thought okay at least you you know we we don't like the u.s nuked us but maybe u.s can save our ass from china
that is that that is their mentality right and 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 but but at at certain point at certain point when you when you can't no longer be denied that the 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 the, the, the the shift balance of power is decidedly in China's favor, favor, and not just China, but the, the whole BRICS. Um, you know, the, the, as, as Putin pointed out, BRICS is already larger than uh, G7 in mm -hmm. terms of its economy, in the, the uh, power purchase parity terms. The BRICS countries are, by and large, developing very rapidly. Look, if memory serves me right, Back in 1992, the share of the G7 countries in the world economy amounted to 47 percent, whereas in 2022 it was down to, I think, a little over 30 percent. The BRICS countries accounted for only 16 percent in 1992, but now their share is greater than that of the G7. It has nothing to do with the events in Ukraine. This is due to the trends of global development and world economy, as I mentioned just now. And this is inevitable. This will keep happening. It is like the rise of the sun. You cannot prevent the sun from rising. You have to adapt to it. And that's and it's set to grow. It's only set to grow. China... Okay, remember, when all these talk about China collapsing, China's economy slowing down, United States uh, were reported what like two point five percent growth, and all the all the newspapers like, wow, we got we achieved a Goldilocks economy, spectacular growth. <laughs> Biden has <laughs> delivered, and, and w w what's China's growth at the same time? Five point three percent. You know, <laughs> China's growth is literally doubled the growth of U.S. economy, but they're saying, oh, China is slowing down. China is collapsing. <laughs> it's over for China. <laughs> China will never catch up. I mean, okay, like, I know I know, people in the United States are not good at math, but if you're growing at 2% and the other economy growing at 5%, at double your, your growth rate, at some point, those exponential growth means they're going to overtake you, you know, even in the nominal dollar term. I mean, China already took United, overtook United States in, in PPP terms. But, the, you know, the, the nominal dollar terms, it, it doesn't really mean much. But even in the nominal dollar terms, China will eventually overtake the United States because there's, there's the, the, the dollar hegemony is already crumbling, as we see. You know, there's a de-dollarization trend all over the world. This is one of the last pillars of the U.S. empire, which... U.S. has stupidly sabotaged by by leveraging uh, uh, it as a financial weapon against the world. Just like like like, like Putin pointed out in the inter interview with Tucker Carlson, it was a grave mistake to for U.S. try to use its uh, dom dominance of the world finance as a weapon, so a geopolitical weapon. It, it had backfired spectacularly. Now you know. Russia and China do do their business in ruble and and yuan, and 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 the 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 the, the Gulf countries, the oil producers, are talking about um, selling their oil in yuan. So, what that what does that left U.S. dollar? You know, to use the dollar as a tool of foreign policy struggle is one of the biggest strategic mistakes made by the U.S. political leadership. The dollar is the cornerstone of the United States power. I think everyone understands very well that no matter how many dollars are printed, they are quickly dispersed all over the world. But they won't stop printing. What does the debt of 33 trillion dollars tell us about? It is about the emission. Nevertheless, it is the main weapon used by the United States to preserve its power across the world. As soon as the political leadership decided to use the US dollar as a tool of political struggle, a blow was dealt to this American power. I would not like to use any strong language, but it is a stupid thing to do and a grave mistake. Сейчас смотрят на то, что происходит.
Look at what is going on in the world. Even the United States allies are now downsizing their dollar reserves. Seeing this, everyone starts looking for ways to protect themselves. But the fact that the United States applies restrictive measures to certain countries, such as placing restrictions on transactions, freezing assets, etc., causes grave concern and sends a signal to the whole world. What did we have here? Until 2022, about 80% of Russian foreign trade transactions were made in US dollars and euros. US dollars accounted for approximately 50% of our transactions with third countries. While currently it is down to 13%. It wasn't us who banned the use of the US dollar. We had no such intention. It was decision of the United States to restrict our transactions in US dollars. I think it is complete foolishness from the point of view of the interests of the United States itself and its taxpayers, as it damages the US economy, undermines the power of the United States across the world. By the way, our transactions in Yuan accounted for about 3%. Today, 34% of our transactions are made in rubles and about as much, a little over 34% in Yuan. Why did the United States do this? My only guess is self-conceit. They probably thought it would lead to full collapse, but nothing collapsed. Moreover, other countries, including oil producers, are thinking of and already accepting payments for oil in yuan. Do you even realize what is going on or not? Does anyone in the United States realize this? What are you doing? You are cutting yourself off. All experts say this. Ask any intelligent and thinking person in the United States what the dollar means for the U.S. But you're killing it with your own hands. Today, Brazil, in our hemisphere, largest country in the Western Hemisphere south of us, cut a trade deal with China. They're going to, from now on, do trade in their own currencies, get right around the dollar. They're creating a, a secondary economy in the world, totally independent of the United States. We won't have to talk about sanctions in five years because there'll be so many countries transacting in currencies other than the dollar. That, that we won't have the ability to sanction them. I mean, Marco Rubio can freak out all he wants. There's not, fundamentally, if U.S. keep on going this path, you know, mm. dollar will keep, the, the, the de-dollarization trend will just keep on accelerating. And, and, and you will, people will say, well, still dollar, still the world's uh, reserve currency, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, until it, 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 it's not. And, and, and things can happen very, very quickly, just like the U.S. hegemony itself. Once what it's like, uh, it's like the dam on, on the on the river. You know, once that dam start breaking, things going to happen very, very mm -hmm. fast. This is something to you, uh, Carl. This is from James Alex. I'm going to highlight it on the screen and you can you can uh, address this. How is a huge loss of evergreen country garden affecting the economy in China? So Chinese economy is slowing down compared a couple of years ago. And one of the uh, reasons for that, it is the shift away from the real estate development. Because um, for many years, a lot of the Chinese economic growth was driven by the real estate development. But, you know, at certain point, you, it's not sustainable. You know, you can build houses and, and say, oh, that's part of the GDP growth and it's all good. But even but eventually, you know, housing is for people to live in. It's not for speculative investment. You know, we've seen what happened with the subprime uh, crisis in 2007, 2008 that brought out brought down the whole world economy. So what actually is happening in China is is healthy house cleaning. And, you know, China need to shift the investment away from the real estate sector to the real productive sector of manufacturing, particularly high-tech manufacturing like, like uh, semiconductors and elect, uh, electric vehicles, you know, which China is doing. So this, during this transition process, 
yes, there will be hiccups. Uh, I mean, uh, people are a lot of people in the real estate developers, you know, a lot of the real estate agent might lose their job. It's true. The, the thing with uh, the, the reporting, the Western media reporting on China is they focus on something negative and they blow it up all like out way out of proportions. Like I like to compare to China as this uh, elephant, right? Everyone knows the stories of the blind man, blind man filling up the elephant. Like we're all basically essentially blind men who are trying to figure out what this element elephant is like. And, 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 uh, but, but what the Western media is doing is a zooming on the elephant's ass. And that's the only thing you see. You, 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 they only show you the words on the elephant's ass and, and, and tell you, this is China. This is the entire, this represents the entirety of China. So China is not perfect is china is not utopia china just has problems just like any other countries in the world you know you also experiencing um economic problems like like rebalancing which is going on right now but it's not that is not the whole picture the whole picture is china is shifting away from the real estate driven development uh for the past several decades and shifting more into high-end manufacturing this is why why you are seeing like uh people in germany are panicking right now because for decades china has been importing high-end machine tools from germany but now china is making making those high-end machine tools themselves mm -hmm. and, and and on top of that china is making electric vehicles for export which is one of the main pillars of the german economy and on top of that the, the, the german didn't do themselves any good by getting themselves cut off on the cheap Russian gas. So, so this is why, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, this is the, the, the much bigger picture is that, you know, in the coming decades, there's will be, instead of a uh, Chinese investment into more unproductive sectors as real estate and particularly real estate speculation, those, those funds are now from now on will be more productively deployed into high-end um, high high tech manufacturing, uh, chip manufacturing, solar, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, sustainable energy development, e uh, electric vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think that's healthy for the, for the long run. In the, in the short term, there's going to be some uh, hiccups in the Chinese economy for sure, but uh, it, it's healthy for, for midterm and long-term development. That's my, my, that's my answer. One thing I want you to talk about, because they always talk about China's debt problem, and, you know, as to as to say that China is a, in a worse economic position than the U.S. or the Western nations. Um, but I want you to address that about the domestic debt. And also, when we talked about how America is moving to uh, position herself around China, why doesn't anybody talk about Jeju Island? the South Korean island that's close to China that they want to make a naval facility that, that's literally a, a rock throw across to the mainland China. So those two things, um, could you address those two? Yeah, so um, people, I talk about bad debts and good debt, but there's also the debt, the domestic debt, which is the debt you owe to yourself and the debt you owe to, owe to foreigners, right? So, mm -hmm. so in China, mostly it's it's a debt that they the owe to the Chinese government owe to the Chinese people. It's mostly domestic debt, right? And they, unlike United States, which depends on foreigners to continually buy treasury bills uh, to finance an astronomic. There, what what is it now? Thirty three trillion dollars that uh, that U.S. accrue. Um, chi China China has a very healthy uh, trade balance. <laughs> I mean, they they have a trade they enjoy a trade surplus <laughs> with 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 the uh, with the world, mostly with the West. China now is actually running a trade deficit with um, with the global South countries because China mm -hmm. is importing a lot of raw materials from the global South countries. Then exporting uh, many, uh, then process them into manufacturing goods and send to the develop uh, so-called developed economy like Europe and 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 U.S. So China enjoy a trade surplus with with U.S. and and uh, Europe, uh, but 
a, 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 a trade deficit with with countries in like Southeast Asia, Africa, Latin America, etc. Right, because China is importing uh, from from these parts. So, so chi China is not having there's like like the 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 debt crisis that they do talk about is they're talking about a lot of the Chinese local government. They in the past it took on a lot of debt to finance uh, infrastructure project, right? And again, ch people forget Chinese government at the end of the day they 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 control all the fi fi financial sector you know unlike united states united states the financial sector controls the government <laughs> the wall street controls the government in, in china the government the chinese government controls the finances so mm -hmm. for them they can just tell the, the the bank of china to shuffle the debt around right i mean they they, they can they can do that. They can do that because Bank of China, they can they can print R and B. They, they can, so they 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 have the power to keep the debt level um, under the debt situation under control. It's never going to like just blow up spectacularly because the central government can always step in and and say, OK, well, we'll like let's uh, let's uh, restructure the debt. This has happened before. This has happened, happened many times before. Um, so, so this is not really the, 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 the pressing issue that the Western media is making it out to be. Um, there was, a, okay, the second part of the question, I believe you're talking about U.S. militarizing the zones all, all around China. It's true. You know, U.S. Is, uh, US has been doing that, I mean, pretty much forever. <laughs> if you think about it, um, back during Vietnam War, South China Sea was essentially American lake, right? U.S. had Air Force base, Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. They had the Subic Bay as a naval naval base, and they have the naval base in South Vietnam. And and then they have these uh, what they call the um, uh, Yankee stations, which is a permanent presence of U.S. aircraft carrier floating in the South China Sea. Uh, this was during the Vietnam War. So if you compare today uh to like the 1960s 1970s us's power is actually in retrenchment right now they're us what you're trying to do they're trying to come back to the philippines because us got kicked out of the philippines after the cold war the 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 the, 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 the philippine uh parliament voted uh, to not to extend the lease on the clark air base and the subic bay naval base so now, now they're trying to use the China threat as a way, a back door to get back to the Philippines. And, and same thing in Korea, um, Japan, and in Taiwan. And, and during Cold War, US, during, through, during the Vietnam War, 60,000 US troops rotated through Taiwan. And US actually posted nuclear tip missiles on Taiwan, pointing at mainland China during during the Cold War. And that was withdrawn after 1970s, after Nixon visited China as part of the deal with China to, to normalize ties. Now, you again, U.S. is trying to walk back. U.S. is trying to bring us back to the Cold War uh, scenario. But they're, they're doing a very s sneaky, small scale, like sending like a couple green berets to the Kinmen Islands. You know, like, what, what is that going to do? That's not going to do anything. That, that, the, those green berets are not going to stop uh, any serious uh, PLA landing. The, the, the only reason they're there is to serve up as a, what they call tripwire, which means, oh, look, they got Americans hostage. They, they capture Americans or, or they killed Americans. So we must enter the war. So that's the whole point. It's called a tripwire strategy. They, they put these... Um, American presence in, in Korea, for example. So like the, they're actually the American presence in Korea is not enough to stop uh, DPRK push onto Seoul, but just enough to harass the locals, you know, to, 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 to but, 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 but their, their whole purpose is to serve, a, serve up a so-called tripwire. You know, mm -hmm. if a war breaks out, that is the U.S. excuse to fully enter the war. And and U.S. has been doing this for decades uh, around China's periphery. You know, uh, same thing with goes with the Marine base in Okinawa, for example. And now they're trying to, um, you know, trying to militarize more 
more parts of uh, but the the the, the 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 bigger picture though is that U- U.S. empire is overstretched. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's you know it's doing this thing in Ukraine. It's doing this thing in Gaza, in Yemen, and just and you you see what happened when they they uh, they, they claim they're gonna hit back on Iran, and and this, they had that leak to. Um, Al Jazeera Arabic, they say basically U.S. Uh, officials send a notice to their Iranian counterpart and say, look, we have to do so. We have to bomb your uh, targets, you know, because we have to look strong. But please do not retaliate. <laughs> but please do not retaliate because we don't really want to escalate this into a full scale war. We're just doing this for show. We need to do this to look strong. And of course, Iran said no, <laughs> no, you're not. We're not going to agree to anything. And, and so, in the end, U.S. What did the U.S. do? They they strike targets inside Syria and Iraq. You know, all the U.S. punching back because U.S. still had military presence in uh, the U.S. still militarily occupies part of Syria and Iraq, and, mm-hmm. and so that that's why they, they they're doing that. But the, they do not have the the, the assets. To do a serious confrontation with China right now, I mean that they, they, they what what they can do is they can create a panic uh, 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 in in they can create a a, a, a some fear mongering in the in the U.S. media to, to make it so oh like there's tension in South China Sea there's tension in Taiwan to distract from the fact that U.S. is impotent to stop the Answer our lot blockade of block Red Sea. Mm-hmm. You know, you United States is supposed to hyperpower the, the 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 global hegemon. They can't even guarantee their own uh, defense department. The U.S. Defense Department's commission ships from traveling to the Red Sea. You know, despite their bombing campaigns. So I mean, like it's it's ridiculous to think they can. And China has been very patient. China has been very restrained. In the response to the continued U.S. provocation on its border, uh, but you know what China is going to do? China is going to do crank up incremental exercises around Taiwan, around the disputed Diaoyu Island with Japan. Because guess what? What what's good good for the goose is good for the gander. You, mm-hmm. China is going to c- carry out freedom of navigation patrol. With, with Russia through the Sea of Japan, they're going to do that freedom of navigation patrol around Alaska, you know. And 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 again, this is uh, just just to show 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 the U.S. Hey, we know your game. Mm. We can play the same game too. Mm-hmm. And and this this is just a but you really you, beyond this kind of game of chicken stuff that U.S. can can pull up in East Asia, they don't have um, they don't have much dry powder at this moment, you know. Every all the dry powder is going to Israel. It's going to support the Golden Boy. <laughs> You're just about right on that. 